Hey guys, and welcome to my second film review. This month is Native American Heritage Month, and I thought I would do a review on a film that really brings that to life. And while I cannot do justice to this movie and this month, I hope to do my best. So let us get lost into the story. The 2003 film Dreamkeeper is a film about Native American stories. It stars August Schellenberg, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, as Pete Chasing Horse and Eddie Spears as Shane Chasing Horse. The main plot of this film involves P. Chasing Horse and his grandson, Shane Chasing Horse. It specifically involves these two characters because it involves Shane taking his grandfather Pete to the All Nations powwow. And along the way, P. Chasing Horse shares with his grandson many stories from different tribes and clans from all the different nations. As Pete is a storyteller who tries to get his grandson to understand and follow, as he puts it, the good red road. In this is meant to embrace his identity as a Native American. As Pete Chasing Horse explains, so much of the indigenous communities and individuals are disconnected from their heritage. And Pete Chasing Horse tells his grandson early in the film that these stories may die out. And he hopes, as he tries to instill in his grandson, a building of bridges from the present to the past, from the past to the present, because these stories are truly special and the stories Pete shares with his grandson from the different nations all have unique lessons within them. And one of the stories that starts to film itself and plays throughout it at different points is the story of Eagle Boy, who attempts to go on a vision quest. Throughout the film, as we watch his story, we see him go through different stages in his journey. We see him go to water, but a great white stag informs him that where he is about to drink from is the home of Umchikula, a great and powerful serpent. And the stag tells him of a powerful woman who has the arrows needed to kill Umchikula. He is tested by the woman, and she gives him the arrows. And after a fierce battle, he kills Umchikula. Following the instructions of the woman, he takes Umchikula's heart. And following this, he gains the power and medicine he so desired. But the power of Umchikula's heart changed his sight to see things he did not wish to see. And eventually, when he went to see the woman again and returning to his village, he cast aside the power, and then we see him back on top of the mountain, seemingly as if nothing had happened. And yet what we saw still remains, but he does not realize it. He comes down from the mountain, believing he hasn't gained the wisdom and medicine he sought. But the elder he speaks with, and tying in his voice with Pete speaking to his grandson, the truth of earning a vision of wisdom and medicine comes from within. Another is the Pawnee story of Dirt Belly and an unwanted done pony. We see Dirt Belly trying to gain acceptance and a better place in life for him and also his grandmother. And as time goes on, the done pony brings Dirt Belly good medicine, and Dirt Belly has to learn a hard lesson through a tragic event. It concludes with an incredible transformation for him and his grandmother. As while you can receive a gift, you mustn't take that gift for granted and be thankful for the gift you have received. And the film itself presents different aspects of indigenous beliefs and values. We see this with Pete Chasing Horse several times. Pete Chasing Horse talks about the connection of all things within nature, like the indigenous connection to the earth and all those who call it home, and also respect and compassion for animals, like how Shane and his grandfather discuss the story of the origin of the mosquito, how it was once the first medicine man, the bear. The bear was greatly honored. Men weren't supposed to hunt him. One day, a group of men were hungry, who went against their beliefs and hunted and killed the bear. And when they tried to cook him, his ashes turned into mosquitoes. And also later in the film, as they drive by and come across a roadkill, Pete has Shane stop and he honors the animal before moving on. As Shane explains that his grandfather does this with every animal they come across as they become roadkill, really presenting that connection of the native peoples with animals and the respect that animals truly deserve. And at one point, as grandfather and grandson are along their journey, a scene comes up that is incredibly ironic for more than one reason, but it gives us another look to the importance of these stories, to those who tell and listen to them, and truly to who they are dedicated to. As our two main characters sit to eat, they are approached by a young white man who is going to the powwow as well. And to Shane's annoyance, the young man is a wannabe. Shane spits in disgust about the wrongs the white man did in the past, about how the white man sought to destroy native cultures and people, and now how white man is seeking to take over native culture. But his grandfather responds, and he does say that the young man is a wannabe, but as he puts it, he's 
want to be connected, that the white man's fathers were the ones responsible for the wrongs done in the past, and how that the white man would look on in disbelief about how his sons and daughters would seek and adopt the native ways. And with that, the tale of Tehan. The story of Tehan really reveals a deeper understanding that at first Shane doesn't realize. It shows a true matter of the heart. People, regardless of their differences, can find connection and understanding with each other. Because even though Tehan experiences unacceptance from some of the Kiowa, as bad, even though he looked different and wasn't born to the Kiowa, he still loved them, especially his sister. And with the battle that Tehan and the young warriors, including those who did not accept him, express, and as P. Chasing Horse affirms to his grandson, Tehan truly was Kiowa. And the movie truly presents a great collection of Native American stories in a truly unifying way. From the antics of Coyote and Iktomi, to the poor Chinook woman who sacrificed herself to save her village, to the Blackfoot hunter who had to accept the loss of his father, and truly to the building connection between Pete Chasing Horse and Shane Chasing Horse. And through the stories his grandfather told him, through their journey to where Shane reunited with his father, the tragic passing of Pete Chasing Horse, and to the ending with Shane going to the All Nations powwow and takes on the role of a storyteller to not only honor his grandfather, but also accepting and embracing his identity as a Native American. Well, I hope I did my best to honor this movie in this month. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm your host, Jeremy Mize, and thank you once again for getting lost into the story with me.